When you've got a distance time graph, where time is what you choose, the independent variable along the x-axis, the dependent variable along the y-axis, mm, how far a car has gone depends on how much time you've given the car to go. It, the distance depends on the time. This is the dependent, the y-axis. When you've got those two, and you do rise over run, rise, divide by run, making a triangle, distance, divide by time. The rise is the distance, the run is the time. Distance divided by time gives velocity or speed, if you don't know what direction it's going. But if it's going one direction all the time, north or towards Spain, if it's going one direction all the time, then it's called velocity because the V for velocity with a line in it makes an arrow. It's got that direction. Velocity is a vector. V for vector with the line in it makes an arrow. Velocity is vector. Vectors have an arrow giving a direction. Scalars, no. Speed is a scalar. S for speed, S for scalar. Hmm. The gradient of a velocity time graph, time distance graph, the, the gradient is distance divided by time, which is velocity. Rise over run. If you've got a velocity time graph, independent, dependent variable, velocity increasing as time goes along. Velocity increasing as time goes along means it's acceleration. Rise over run. The velocity change divided by the time change Velocity divided by time gives you acceleration. The gradient of a velocity time graph is acceleration. Because acceleration equals velocity over time. Whereas to get distance, rearranging the formula velocity equals distance over time, Rearrange that formula, you get distance equals velocity times time. So if you have a velocity time graph that goes like that, just a straight line, just one velocity, then you get a rectangle. And the velocity times by the time is the area of the rectangle. And velocity times by time is the distance. The distance on a velocity time Graph is the area underneath the line. Good. That's my lesson for physics today. Oh, still going.